A very good afternoon. Welcome back to Mission 10 X session. And today I have with me Dr. Kaval Good, who is a very senior member from the training division of Wipro Technologies. We're very glad to have Dr. Kaval Good here. He brings with him a vast experience in academics, training, and research. So today he'll be giving us a session on interactive methods and designing for your own classrooms. Welcome. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Dr. Sujata. Welcome, everybody. Welcome for this uh, designing active learning uh, section. What we have done yesterday is to come up with a session objective. Now, let us uh, look at the different way of presenting this uh, concept. Let us uh, briefly recap what we did yesterday. Dr. Rajiv did uh, uh, take you to the session objective. We started uh, by writing uh, questions for uh, learning outcomes, which we in turn converted them into the session objectives. Okay. Then along with that, we identified the important concepts and topics in the session. And the point we pondered was, is it possible to go for higher level of learning once we have these techniques? Okay, so we have this session objective now. Let us look at how we can actually present it in the class. Is there any alternative method? We'll uh, explore that. What we have is we have a good amount of uh, questionnaires uh, in my slides. I would like to request you to interact with all the things, questions. So whenever there is a question, please do feel free to interact. Come up with your answers. Come up with your solutions. Come up with the queries. Let us uh, look at uh, one example. Okay. Let us uh, say a matrix multiplication. Okay. So what we'll do? I want to teach matrix multiplication in my one hour class. Okay. So probably as from our uh, previous session, we'll frame the session objective for the session. Then identify the delivery mode, the way we are going to deliver. Can we get some responses from the participants? What are the typical modes of delivery? Of course, chalk and talk is already there. So can we have some chart? Can we have something else? We can have about uh, first four responses, please. We'll take about uh, 30 seconds should be good time, I believe. Apart from chalk and talk, what else can be looked into? Maybe the charts. Okay, I have one answer already. Lecture with the hands on uh, uh, paper sheets. Good. I have time for three more. Okay, there is one more. Give examples. Give analogies. Uh, take the input from the people. Okay. Some animations. So uh, generate some animation and uh, uh, interact with the people. Good. I have one more. Last. I have three answers. Waiting for one more answer. Yes. Uh, the last is uh, grammatical representations. So there are different uh, techniques uh, available to identify the delivery mode. OK, I have decided I will use one of these techniques. Then what? Can I include some way of interactiveness? OK, so there are a few more uh, things com coming up. Condition for the matrix multiplication, need for matrix multiplication, and uh, so on. Things, very great. So we have a large number of responses coming. Excellent. Okay. So can we make this interactive? Instead of we monologue, can we have the multilog? Can we involve the student also? This intern is expected to have the proper learning has taken place. And how do we ensure that? Okay. Now, why to make the session interactive? We identified in yesterday's session objective and the important concepts. The moment the students are involved in actual discussion in the class, the amount of retention as well as the understanding would be better. So we would like to have more interaction from the participant. That is, is it possible to convert ourselves <coughs> from the lecture mode to the facilitator mode? Let us look at the next point. Yes, what can be done? Fine. We have decided to teach matrix multiplication. 
we decided what the mode of our uh, delivery and so on. Now, what would be the emphasis? Matrix multiplication is too wide a canvas to paint on. On that, what we are going to give the emphasis? One example, as uh, uh, Professor Patak mentioned in the morning. So, can we use the matrix? Are we teaching matrix for the Gauss elimination method? Or are we give, uh, using matrix for something else? What is our emphasis? Can we get some uh, responses? What is what would be your emphasis on the matrix multiplication? Uh, we'll uh, take about uh, 45 seconds because the number of responses would be more. I had more than 10 uh, responses last time. Okay, multiplication of matrix using MATLAB. Okay, good. That may be one way. The problem with MATLAB is just A into B will give the matrix uh, multiplication. Since we are looking at C and C++, can we look from the C and C++ uh, this thing, C++ uh, uh, orientation. Okay, uh, NIT Suratkal uh, talks about the application, why and where matrix multiplication can be used, should be used. Anybody else? Okay, method of matrix multiplication, how we can uh, do it, can we do it more efficiently or are we writing a subroutine to do it? If we are doing the subroutine, how are we passing the parameters and so on? It is from uh, VNIT Nagpur, types of uh, or the methods of matrix multiplication. <coughs> yes? Come on, come on. Anybody want to look at the optimization part? <coughs> yeah, using the Scilab or a, a MATLAB, any other thing. Nested loop structure using the two dimensional array. So, loop calling one loop calling the other one. So, if you are using the Scilab or the MATLAB, probably we will go at a application level, okay, matrix multiplication is available, how I can use it for something else. <coughs> okay, matrix multiplication uh, considering the rules for, uh, sorry, yeah, uh, rules for multiplication, rows and columns are to be same and some extra information, application of matrix multiplication, right. Can we have two more? Okay, substitution techniques the different techniques of uh, matrix multiplication. We will have one more please. Let us look at some of the things what can be done. The first thing may be just write simple matrix multiplication probably at uh, the first year level as a tool C language as a tool for the matrix multiplication. The second may be I am writing the matrix multiplication as a subroutine how to pass the parameters may be using the pointers as Professor Patak mentioned yesterday. So, we can use the pointers to pass the parameters, do the multiplication in the subroutine, come back over here. Then subsequently we have the application of matrix multiplication, example may be computer graphics, Newton Raphson method, Gauss elimination method and so on, okay. data compression, so on and so forth. Then may be the computational complexity of matrix multiplication. What is the computational complexity? What is the order? Is it n square? or n cube, n log n, what is the order of matrix multiplication computation or are we doing some optimization technique? Are we writing a matrix multiplication for the space optimized or the time optimized or maybe something like a coming out with a VLSI chip where we have the limitation that I may not be able to go for the floating point operations and so on, right. If we see that some of the points what we have noted over here are as per the Bloom's level at the uh, increasing order of Bloom's uh, taxonomical level. So, up to what level we need to go depending upon our audience, our semester, it may vary. Now, the question is will our approach be same for different requirement? Each one of you had mentioned different uh, requirement, we listed of some of the things over here. Will the techniques, will our method would be the same for all the requirements? Yes, no. Can we have quick answers? Yes, the answers have started uh, coming in. Will the requirement techniques be same for different requirement? Answer would be one is yes. The basic structure would be the same. Basic structure of matrix multiplication is the same. So the technique would be almost the same. A few answers are no. Well, depending upon our emphasis, the way I approach would be different. 
for application, I don't uh, write the matrix multiplication program. I have the matrix multiplication program. Now, what to go ahead with that? So, the answer is no. Yes, I have a few more, couple of more answers. Yes, couple of answers. No, we have one more. Some four, five answers. Okay, the last one says also no. Okay, I personally feel that the approach would be different for the different requirement. Depending upon the requirement, our approach, our emphasis, and what we are going to cover will be different. So, when that is the case, based on our learning expectations, can we design an interactive method for delivery? Can we have some interactive methods? A uh, few days back, Dr. Joshi had mentioned or listed out some of the interactive techniques, right? So, can we use some of those interactive techniques in this application? So, can we get uh, first three responses? Take about uh, 30 seconds. List out some of the techniques which can be uh, interactive techniques which can be used for matrix multiplication. The example may be the brainstorming sessions group discussions, something like that, role model, role play, yes we can have some uh, role model or the role play, okay. uh, I have couple of answers uh, telling quiz, uh, ask the students about the questions, how to do it and they will come up with the steps to write the programs which will be able to do it, yeah role play is men mentioned there. Okay, innovative assignments, give the assignment for the student, they can come up with the things. You can have one more, last. Demonstration. Okay, we can show that, uh, demonstrate the uh, program uh, for the class, they can uh, look at that. So, some of the things that can be done, which uh, Dr. Joshi had uh, mentioned earlier, which we had uh, seen. It may be the brainstorm, can we have some brainstorming session, group discussion, people will discuss and come up with the solutions. Can we have the games or the seminars? So, can we arrange some games? Seminars may be okay in the class. Then, uh, okay, gaming program, somebody had uh, mentioned that, good. Role plays, some people had mentioned, quiz and the puzzle, we had mentioned. So, can we, as we say that, we can have some of these interactive techniques for our sessions. So, what can be done? Once the interactive sessions is in place, uh, we have the session objective, we have the uh, mode of delivery, what is to be done and what we are concentrating on and we have a interactive methodology for the student to be uh, introduced to. Let us go ahead, what can be done? Well. And uh, I want to do some interactive techniques, interactive sessions. So, what are the challenges that are associated here? Some of the questions, will the content be sacrificed in order to give the student time they need to explore? Do we need to sacrifice on some of the contents so that we can include the uh, interactive sessions? When we do that, will we address both advanced as well as the weaker students? in our uh, session, the interactiveness will it uh, help both the advanced as well as the weaker student to answer, okay. Uh, the third would be, can we measure if we successfully taught the skills like the program uh, problem solving or the appropriate skills to the students. So, all the questions have the yes, no, yes, no, yes, no options. So, I already saw a couple of uh, answers. Can we give, get the answer like uh, the first one? Suppose if you say yes for all the thing, why, why, why? If you say yes, no, yes, why, n, why, something like that. Can we get the responses from the participants, please? Okay, yes, no, yes, no, yes, yes. Second yes, third no, all yeses. So, different things, right? Yeah, good number of responses. Almost, almost everybody is giving their responses. Yes, no, no, yes, no, no. Excellent. Thank you. Well, uh, wherever there is no, for example, can we address both advanced and the weaker student? If the answer is no, can we slightly modify it 
such that both of them are involved. What we mean to say is, can we group the weaker as well as the uh, people who are uh, quite strong in that one, maybe group them together so that each one teach one kind of things and thereby the knowledge can be shared across everybody. Can we think of some of these techniques? Okay, I have got, got one more answer. No, yes, yes, uh, from uh, Trishur. Okay. So, can we slightly reorganize whatever we thought the interactive session so that all of them can be involved? Okay. The idea is, as we had mentioned, the moment we have the interactive session, the learning happens in a better way. The retention rate would be better. Okay. Well, what we looked over here is as one case study. So, we took the case study as the matrix multiplication. Now, let us go back to your subject. Yesterday, we wrote the session objectives. All of us wrote the session objectives. We started with the important questions. What is to be looked into? What is to be delivered into? And so on. Right? Now, can we think of some innovative or the interactive sessions for our session objectives? Yesterday we wrote the session objective. So, I want to perform something like uh, maybe the multidimensional arrays. I am teaching multidimensional arrays. So, what are the kind of the interactiveness I can include in my session? That would be our take home, that will be our take home assignment. What to be done? Okay. Suggested uh, group activity. So, group uh, preparation. Form a group of uh, maybe three people each. Each faculty will identify three ways of teaching the important concepts through the active learning strategies. So, come up with a different uh, methodology. So, some of you had mentioned the brainstorming games and other things for the matrix multiplication. So, similarly, can we think of some interactiveness for our session objective which we prepared yesterday. Discuss with your team members, each one of you prepare, discuss with your team members on feasibility of implementation of these activities. right? Yes, I say games would be good enough, but is it possible, is it feasible to perform it in the class? Is the time sufficient to perform that uh, activity in the class? Discuss with your uh, group members, have the brainstorming activities and choose the best among the three. You have three options, whichever is the most suitable, most appropriate and can be implemented in the class, that one will select and write the suggested activity in the given template provided. So, once you are done with that, once you are selected the activity, what can be done? Let us fill up the uh, activity uh, template. Okay. So, this uh, would be our next uh, assignment. I think if I remember assignment number 7, right? assignment number 7. So, what we say is purpose of the activity. What is the need and purpose of this activity? Why we are performing this activity? Planning the required for conducting the activity. What are the prerequisites needed to conduct the activity? I want to perform the role play. So, we need to train the people beforehand so that they can uh, enact that role play in an efficient way. I want to conduct some uh, quiz. What are the kind of the questions and uh, the other setups needed to conduct the quiz? So, what is the planning required for conducting this activity? Then, teaching and learning materials required. So, should we need the PowerPoint? Should we need something else? Should we need the chart? What else we need apart from the regular chalk and talk? Then, the relevant information instructions needed before or during the activity. Suppose I want to conduct the quiz. What are the guidelines for the quiz? How the winner is selected? How the what to be done if there is a tie and how to be done? So, what are the options or what are the informations needed to be provided during as well as the before we start the activity. Finally, the activity description, how the activity is actually conducted. So, this is a take home activity. You discuss with your team members, come up with the most appropriate activity, selected activity and submit it in the Moodle. Okay. Uh, that is a uh, add uh, uh, what I had uh, to discuss briefly about uh, to introduce the activity. Once the 
session objective, the activity and the learning outcomes are in place. Let us look at the session plan in the next class. So, please log in into the Mission 10X faculty. Note that M, X and F are uppercase, all the other things are lowercase. Log in over there, you will be able to access the templates, you will be able to access some of the informations what uh, Dr. Rajiv had uh, mentioned yesterday. Right? So, uh, that is uh, briefly what I had uh, to discuss with you. I will be very glad to take the questions. Can we take a couple of questions please? Okay, if you have any queries, questions, uh, you are free to contact me. I had given my email id narsema.kalgood at uh, mission10x.com. You can uh, write to me, we can have the interactions.